la notification du premier cas confirmé du nouveau coronavirus COVID-19. The individual is a male in his 40s and a resident of Ottawa who recently returned from travel to Austria. The individual is currently in self-isolation at home and has mild symptoms. The individual was asymptomatic during the flights to Ottawa and he presented to the Ottawa Hospital emergency room after experiencing symptoms. The individual has been conscientious about his self-isolation and he's been accepting guidance from Ottawa Public Health. Today, Ottawa Public Health was notified of a positive result. So Ottawa Public Health is following up with a small number of close contacts as part of our ongoing case management investigation. It is always important to remind residents to continue to follow normal precautions to help stop the spread of germs. So wash your hands with soap and water or use hand sanitizer. Avoid touching your eyes, nose and mouth unless you've just cleaned your hands. Cover your cough and your sneeze with a tissue or into your arm, not your hand. If possible, stay home when you're sick. Avoid visiting people in hospitals or long-term care homes if you are sick and finally, it is not too late to get your flu shot if you uh, call your family physician's office to see if they still have some or a pharmacy. Ottawa Public Health has been active in enhanced operations since January and we're working to ensure that we have the processes and structure in place to adequately respond to the COVID-19 situation. This work does not change with our first positive case. We've been treating this as a pandemic and supporting residents and partners to prepare for escalating circumstances. Depuis janvier, Santé Publique Ottawa participe activement à des opérations renforcées pour s'assurer que nous avons les processus et les structures en place pour répondre à la situation COVID-19. Nous avons traité cette situation comme une pandémie et nous avons aidé les résidents et les partenaires à se préparer à une escalade de la situation. We've been consistently working to actively detect the virus in travelers <coughs> while enhancing our surveillance activities, which includes testing for people who have not traveled, where there's severe respiratory illness. We've been answering questions from the public and healthcare providers <coughs> to help assess whether and when testing is, is needed, and we've been facilitating that testing in emergency rooms. We're continuing to create special teams within our organization and regionally while reassigning staff to respond to the emerging demands. We have a special website for residents and one specifically for healthcare providers. We've been supporting community agencies and workplaces, employers in our community to ensure consistent communications to help residents prepare for a pandemic. As the situation evolves, we'll continue to work closely with local hospitals, health system partners, the Ministry of Health, Public Health Ontario, and national partners to support our community. I would like to assure residents that as a system, we're prepared to respond to this case and to continue to support our community in monitoring, detecting, and containing this virus. This includes working with our healthcare system partners to implement COVID-19 community assessment centers. So this will be a new service available in our community within a week to increase capacity for testing for the virus outside of hospitals. I would like to remind residents just how important it is that we continue to support each other in our community through this situation. I know anxiety levels can be high and we need to help each other with uh, seeking accurate information. Therefore, please continue to visit ottawapublichealth.ca backslash coronavirus. <coughs> Je voudrais rappeler aux résidents à quel point il est important que nous continuons à nous soutenir mutuellement dans notre communauté face à cette situation et à rechercher des mises à jour précises. Veuillez continuer de visiter notre site santépubliqueottawa.ca bar oblique coronavirus. Merci. I'll hand the floor over to the Mayor of the City of Ottawa, Jim Watson. Great, merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Dr. Etches and Dr. Wilmore, uh, Chair Egli. I understand that today's developments will be worrisome uh, to all residents. I would, however, as Dr. Etches has indicated, urge people to remain calm and follow the sound advice of the Ottawa Public Health Unit. The City of Ottawa, with local, provincial and federal partners, have been preparing for the possibility of a pandemic situation for some time now. 
La Ville d'Ottawa, avec ses partenariats provinciaux et fédéraux, se prépare pour la possibilité d'une situation pandémique dès le début. On January 23, 2020, the City of Ottawa's Office of Emergency Management entered into situational awareness in support of Ottawa Public Health to monitor the global spread of COVID-19. On March 5th of this year, the City of Ottawa entered enhanced operations to ensure all city departments were engaged with the coordination and sharing of information and to ensure preparedness in the event of a pandemic. Today, the City will enter into activated operations. This means that all city departments will be engaged in the response of COVID-19 and the Emergency Operations Center is now officially opened at City Hall. Aujourd'hui, la Ville d'Ottawa entre en opération activité, activée, excusez-moi, voulant dire que tous les départements seront engagés dans les efforts à répondre au virus ici à la Ville d'Ottawa. Un centre d'opération d'urgence sera activé afin d'appuyer ces efforts. For example, uh, as Dr. Etch has mentioned, uh, COVID-19 community assessment centers uh, will be open locally and more details with respect to the location and hours of operation will be provided. This is to take pressure obviously off emergency rooms in hospitals. If you receive questions from members of the public or from partners, please refer to the, inf the information available on the public health website. That is the most up-to-date, uh, current, helpful information for all residents of Ottawa. And once again, it's ottawapublichealth.ca slash coronavirus. En français, c'est www.santepublicottawa.ca slash coronavirus. Merci, and I want to thank Dr. Etches and her team, and uh, obviously Dr. Wilmore and the staff of all of our hospitals uh, as we prepare uh, for a situation that no one knows what the final outcome is going to be, but we certainly are doing every week, everything we can to provide information to our residents so that they can make informed choices with respect to um, the next several weeks and months. Merci. Thank you. Thank you very much. C'est le travail de Santé publique Ottawa de faire le suivi avec les contacts. Euh, alors, je pense que Dr. Wilmore n'a pas l'information. Oui, <rire> d'accord. Euh, so, alors, avec euh, chaque situation où quelqu'un a un dépistage pour le COVID-19, notre infirmière euh, parlait avec euh, le, la personne et euh, donnait l'avis d'être en, en isolation. Et cet homme a fait ça. En fait, il a, elle a pris les précautions avant ça. Quand il a euh, le symptôme qui, qui est apparu, <coughs> il, a, il a resté chez eux. Chez, chez eux. Euh, la personne euh, était euh, dans, dans la maison. Euh, euh, C'est un processus de santé publique de faire le suivi, de déterminer qui est le contact. Alors, dans ce cas, c'est une situation avec un euh, faible nombre dans la famille, les contacts, contacts proches. Et c'est une investigation qui continue. Nous avons euh, un processus de vérifier chaque heure euh, dans la vie de la personne quand il a des symptômes. Et, mais c'est euh, euh, un, un cas où on continue l'investigation. Euh, je peux euh, aussi répéter le processus, c'est d'aider les gens qui ont une histoire de voyager, <coughs> qui après développent des symptômes d'une maladie respiratoire, de déterminer si c'est important d'avoir un dépistage. Oui, si quelqu'un a un dépistage, on travaille avec les gens de donner l'avis d'être en isolation. Et c'est quand il y a un dépistage positif, un cas confirmé, c'est quand je peux discuter les détails. On ne, discute, on ne discute pas les détails de, de les gens qui sont en, en, des personnes euh, qui ont juste eu un, un, un dépistage. Merci beaucoup. Uh, we have a question at the left side of the room. One, two, three. Sorry, uh, yes, go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, probably want you to repeat some of that in, in, in English. Um, I just wanted to get a few more details about this person. Um, were they symptomatic on the plane? And what kind of symptoms did he have? Or, or who was he in contact with? He had 
so this, this person was asymptomatic on the plane, so there's no need to uh, you know, work on identifying the, the flight numbers or other people on the plane. There's no risk to others on the plane. Um, once he was back in Ottawa, uh, what he started to feel was just a, a little unwell and, and then to, to <coughs> develop symptoms of a respiratory illness. So I don't have all the details of exactly his symptoms. My team collects that information. Um, but he felt unwell uh, to, to be able then to take the steps to, to go home and, and be at home. And that uh, is, is then, you know, when, when he wasn't getting better, he presented for testing. And so uh, all those precautions were taken uh, as well uh, for a respiratory illness when he presented for testing. So the Ottawa Hospital, uh, actually before we even started talking about COVID-19, uh, has protocols in place to manage uh, respiratory illness and uh, the, the workup for someone to go through <coughs> the process of doing tests for respiratory illness in a safe way. And so those precautions were followed. Yeah, so I can tell you the definition of a close contact includes uh, people who, who do share a home, uh, people who may have shared respiratory secretions. So if uh, you shared a, a, you know, a cup with somebody, uh, other uh, close contact where you could have been in contact with respiratory secretions, the, um, the number is small. It, it, it's, uh, you know, I don't want to go into specifics because it's a family situation and a few friends, but it's, it's, uh, it's, a, uh, that, that's under investigation to determine whether there was any need to go uh, into the workplace setting and, uh, you know, further uh, follow up there. In fact, uh, uh, as I said, this person has been very conscientious and, and has not been at work. Okay, we'll come over here next. Um, do you have more details about where this, you say Austria, can you give us more details in that? Was the person traveling through Austria from another destination? Were they spending time in Austria? Can you give us some more information? Uh, the, the person's destination was Austria. They were in Austria for, for a number of days and then they returned from Austria through uh, to Ottawa through uh, airports. Now you said that they were tested at the Ottawa hospital, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, at this point in time, if somebody has a travel history, and, and let me be clear now because it's new uh, information, if travel history means anyone who's traveled outside of Canada, and they come back uh, within those 14 days following travel to any country, including the United States, people should self-monitor for symptoms. If they develop a fever or a cough, a sign of a respiratory illness, then they need to uh, let Ottawa Public Health know and we'll guide them through to testing. The testing right now is performed in emergency rooms. Uh, what we're looking to do very shortly is open an assessment centre where people can uh, receive that testing and that assessment uh, outside of hospital. Now we've heard of another presumptive case of a firefighter in Bell's Corners. Can you give us some details on that, please? So uh, there are at least uh, you know 10 to 20 cases every day where a clinician who assesses somebody determines that their travel history and their symptoms warrant testing for the COVID virus. So every day our nurses are working through that process with clinicians, thinking about the risks, thinking about um, those people who are undergoing testing and whether any precautions need to be taken. Every person who has a, a test for the coronavirus is told to stay in self-isolation until the results come back. What I'll be sharing with the public is any information about confirmed cases. Okay, so we'll just see any further questions. Okay. One, two. I spoke to a woman this morning who had returned from Los Angeles and was sick, and she called uh, Ottawa Public Health for advice, left a message, and she said she hasn't got a call back yet. For t It's been 24 hours now. Do you know how many calls you're receiving and what your response time is? Uh, yes, yeah, so the advice uh, increased on Monday uh, for any any travel out of country and as you can imagine that's increased the calls to our line uh, people with questions so yesterday was the first time we started to see some waits on the phone lines uh, we had uh, close to 200 calls um, we have since ramp ramped up our capacity and the number of nurses working on the phone lines so we have extended hours uh, we've actually uh, through this process now to meet the demand uh, not only on our phone lines but for follow-up of people undergoing investigations I think we've reassigned at least 70 nurses to date 
Um, so I'm sorry that she's had trouble getting through on the phone line. I would encourage her to continue to call, and we uh, de definitely um, will we'll be there to, to provide her with some advice. Okay. Est-ce qu'on peut avoir un peu plus de détails, peut-être en français, sur les euh, places où les gens pourront aller pour euh, faire les tests en dehors de, des hôpitaux, parce que ça va être un peu partout dans la ville, et aussi le point de service à l'hôtel de ville, si j'ai bien compris? Oui, euh, je vais te donner la question à Dr. Will Morris concernant les, les uh, centres. Um, donc, uh, je vais juste répondre en, en anglais, je m'excuse, uh, mais je veux juste avoir la terminologie et uh, juste un message clair. Um, so, I apologize to our French viewers. I, uh, I'm just going to reply in English to make sure I have a clear message. Um, so, the, uh, the sites for the assessment centers that are being created in, in concert with public health in the city of Ottawa, um, as well as the regional table for the healthcare sector, um, the first of several assessment sites is slated to be open within a week. Uh, we're very well on our way to establishing um, <coughs> the necessary uh, equipment, supplies, and logistics to uh, get that process going, but we don't want to disclose the location at this time because we want to make sure we have everything ready, and then we're going to have uh, very clear messaging to the public. So we're going to require um, our media contacts to be able to help us get that message out when it comes, and that's going to be available in the next uh, couple of days. Yeah, tell us how you're determining where the Absolutely. So we're starting. Uh, so we we have a um, we're working very closely with uh, with public health as well as the city of Ottawa to essentially stage a sorry about that essentially stage a distribution model that will allow us to um, have patients uh, essentially seen in uh, across the city. So they're going to be central. We're starting with a central location, and then we're going to move to the other areas of the city. Uh, but the areas will be accessible, and they're. Uh, uh, taking into mind um, the needs of the region. Seven days uh, it might seem a long time to people who are coughing, sneezing, or wondering what that, what's happening to them. So in the meantime, what are their options? So currently with public health uh, um, messaging and calls, if uh, folks require testing, they do need to go to the emergency department to get that testing done. Um, certainly this increases the volume in the emergency departments, and it's something that um, uh, the region, from a healthcare sector perspective, we, we have a regional table where we've all been uh, communicating and trying to mitigate this. Um, for us, the, the, uh, a very high priority is getting these assessment centers open. Um, and again, we'll be able to provide uh, details on that in the coming days. So we're well on our way in planning, and we're going to be going live very shortly. Je voudrais peut-être juste cette question. Je voudrais ajouter que notre infirmière peut aider avec le processus d'aller aux urgences. So, our nurses are able to help people with that process of going to emergency. What we're talking about, if the volume of tests uh, in increases before we're able to open the center, is to stagger the visits to the emergency department. So, we do uh, ask people to call Ottawa Public Health so we can facilitate that process and make it easier on the system. So, thank you. We'll go in order here. One, two, three, four. Are you planning? We've had a request, sorry, for your mic. I'll just bring it over here. Uh, so we're uh, currently in the process of opening uh, the first centre. Um, we are working very carefully with the data that we're getting from public health, the volumes of visits, and we're going to start concurrently working on opening a second centre. Um, as you can imagine, the need for testing and the dynamic nature of uh, an illness in the community uh, will start generating some data in terms of the volumes of uh, folks that are require uh, are requiring this screening these screening procedures. So uh, we're starting with uh, one immediately, and as well as the planning for the second. And we're going to have to work together and revisit this as this uh, situation evolves. And we saw Shopify today encouraging or saying that they're asking their employees to work from home starting on Monday. So I guess what is the advice? To Yes, so um, we are uh, still talking about a situation here where the case is related to travel and we're taking the measures to contain uh, transmission of this infection by following up with the contacts. Uh, we don't have any evidence yet of, of local transmission. We do know uh, that travel outside of the country, uh, you know, is, is a risk and so we're asking employers to think about 
whether any work-related travel is necessary at this time. Uh, we are working with employers if they have questions about somebody who has traveled, what should they do, you know, just employers are, are welcome to consult with Ottawa Public Health. Uh, when it comes to the advice about working from home, I think we've been saying that for a little while, that that is something that helps increase the distance between people, and it is is a good thing to do uh, when there's virus circulating in the community. Uh, it can decrease transmission. Um, other, other methods of social distancing, so considering the types of gatherings that people are organizing. The federal government of Canada just came out with some guidance for uh, people who are organizing events um, to think about, is this a high-risk event, is this a low-risk event, and um, you know whether or not that should continue. High-risk events would be events that involve bringing people from outside of Canada, from, from many countries, into a large gathering. Those kinds of events are, are something I would, you know, be interested in talking to organizers about uh, if they can postpone. The lower-risk events are, are events that involve people just within Ottawa, you know, or domestic events, smaller numbers, and um, employers or others who are hosting events can think about measures, again, where you would decrease the contact between people. We're seeing people, uh, you know, avoid handshaking, uh, you know, looking at whether foods can be prepackaged. Uh, uh, you know, there's different measures you can take, and we're happy to, uh, to consult on that. Monsieur, Monsieur le maire, uh, bonjour. Euh, donc, euh, là, c'est le premier cas. Vous l'avez dit, vous comprenez que les gens pouvaient être nerveux à l'idée qu'il y en ait d'autres, mais on sait qu'il va y en avoir d'autres. Euh, on parle d'événements publics à éviter. Euh, par exemple, dans le cas du transport en commun, euh, les, euh, bon, les gens vont peut-être rester chez eux, mais ceux qui vont utiliser le train, euh, le transport en commun, est-ce qu'on peut envisager, là, qu'est-ce qu que vous envisagez par rapport à ça? La vie continue, pas de changement? Bien, ça, c'est certainement notre but, de continuer des services essentiels pour le public, parce que c'est important pour euh, euh, les docteurs, les, euh, les autres personnes qui travaillent dans le secteur de, de la santé. C'est nécessaire pour leur transportation et certainement pour, euh, pour des résidents de la ville d'Ottawa. Alors, pour le moment, il n'y a pas de changement aux, aux situations avec euh, ce service. Comme le docteur a dit, euh, c'est possible pour certains employés de, re de rester chez chez eux pour euh, travailler, mais comme tu le sais, il y a beaucoup de personnes, ce n'est pas euh, une option réalistique, des personnes qui euh, sont responsables pour les roues et les, les polices, les paramédics, les pompiers, etc. Alors, euh, pour le moment, il n'y a pas de changement à la ville d'Ottawa qui concerne euh, le travail, mais euh, on continue, notre priorité euh, est de continuer de, de d'offrir de des services euh, importants pour la population et ça, c'est la raison que maintenant, Uh, nous sommes à uh, 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 ouvrir notre centre d'urgence de, et des opérations à l'hôtel de ville pour uh, travailler avec tous les départements et avec le département de, de santé publique. Chaque jour, on a un, un briefing pour uh, à la situation. Savez-vous qu'il faut interrompre le service de train léger en ce moment à <coughs> cause de, justement, de… c'est un milieu fermé, le risque de transmission est peut-être… Oui, plus, mais, euh, mais euh, certainement… Um, ça, c'est la situation aussi, un, un conducteur est malade. Ça, c'est un, un défi pour nous autres de fournir un backup euh, un conducteur pour la train, par exemple. Mais certainement pour moi et le personnel de la ville d'Ottawa, on travaille très, très euh, proche avec le euh, Dr. Hatches et son équipe et l'hôpital euh, d'Ottawa. Et euh, on continue de, de fournir des services, euh, euh, non seulement pour, euh, pour les personnes qui utilisent le transport en commun, mais aussi pour... Euh, Uh, la police, les pompiers, uh, les paramédics, uh, les autres personnes qui sont responsables pour, pour cette uh, situation. Dr. Etches, correct me if I'm <coughs> wrong, but we've heard that this coronavirus can spread even when somebody doesn't show symptoms. So if someone came over on an airplane and didn't show symptoms but now has, has been tested as positive, shouldn't the people on, that were on that air flight with him be aware of it? I that's not, that's not the public health guidance uh, that's being used around the world uh, because uh, it, it's not likely for someone who's asymptomatic to have a very high viral load or to, to spread that in, in the same way as someone who has symptoms. Uh, so the, the case is actually to date, there is no confirmed transmission of the COVID-19 virus on an aircraft in, in, uh, in this outbreak or pandemic. The, um, 
Yep, the, the, you can imagine when you're coughing, when you're sneezing, you're really, you know, that's when there's more risk. One other thing about paramedics, are they going to be start being able to test in homes as well? That is also absolutely an active conversation. I don't know if you want to add to that, uh, sure. Dr. Uh, Wilmore. Uh, certainly we're in uh, conversations with paramedics to try to, just like everywhere else in the region, we want to leverage every opportunity we have to um, find different ways to test people that doesn't involve emergency departments. So that is actively in the works, um, and we're working with our paramedic uh, partners to operationalize that in the short term. Est-ce qu'on peut répéter les questions, les, les derniers en français ensuite, euh, pour euh, les personnes qui sont euh, asymptomatiques, pour répéter cette ré réponse en français? Uh, D'accord. Um, Ce n'est pas un grand risque si quelqu'un n'a pas de symptômes, parce que c'est avec une tue ou euh, euh, beaucoup de gouttelettes, ou euh, c'est quand le virus est plus euh, nombreux mm -hmm. euh, et... Euh, c'est plus grand la risque de transmission. Euh, il n'y a pas un cas sur un avion où euh, il y a évidence de la transmission de la COVID-19. Great, so we have one, two, three. I'll just bring the mic over, sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Um, for Dr. Wilmore, how many cases have been tested at the Ottawa Hospital? Or people come in to be assessed and then tested? I don't have those exact numbers right now. Um, I can tell you that uh, yesterday we tested uh, approximately 25 patients uh, from the numbers that I got. Um, we also have people presenting to hospital who don't require uh, testing but are concerned, um, and uh, I can make both of those numbers available. Okay. And, and the numbers I have are for the city as a whole. There have been uh, over 150 negative uh, tests so far. Okay. And is there any backlog? Depuis, le, depuis is janvier, there? depuis le début de le, oui. Is there a backlog or a limit to how many tests you can do? Um, you, they can do as many as you take, or is there a limit per day that you can do? The challenges with um, uh, with testing in in, uh, in emergency departments is that the the testing requires the use of a private room, and that room needs to be turned over. Uh, by which we mean it needs to be cleaned and disinfected for the next patient to receive testing. Um, that process is uh, pretty cumbersome in an emergency department when you have a lot of other things going on because we have a regular flow of patients as well as the um, as well as those patients that are sort of an added load to the system. Um, so we are limited in terms of the, the, the throughput that we can achieve in hospital because we, we need to be looking after all of our patients, hence the need to open up these assessment centers to be able to offload some of that. So we do project that um, the, the speed at which people can be tested um, will increase significantly once we get our assessment centers open. And has that meant delaying other procedures in order to accommodate this need right now? Uh, we have not had to delay other procedures. Um, we have continued our operations in the emergency department. Um, in fact, today uh, the Ottawa Hospital has gone into uh, into an enhanced operations uh, mode um, and we've actually uh, struck our emergency operations uh, centre um, similar to the actions taken by the city and public health and our regional partners. Um, and really what this is, is uh, increasing the level of uh, communication, the cadence of activities really specific to uh, COVID-19. And um, we are going to uh, leverage all of the functionality with those enhanced operations to make sure that we can maintain um, our continuity of operations and maintain the, the care that we're providing for the community. Okay. Okay, je vais essayer. Uh, <coughs> donc, uh, uh, la difficulté avec. Uh, uh, avec les tests euh, dans l'hôpital, c'est qu'on a besoin de continuer avec la fonction de l'hôpital. Donc, euh, nous avons beaucoup de patients, beaucoup à faire. Donc, euh, si nous avons euh, euh, plusieurs et plusieurs patients euh, avec la nécessité de faire le test, euh, il faut euh, nettoyer la chambre où on fait le test euh, dans la salle d'urgence. Et normalement, nous avons beaucoup de gens euh, dans la salle d'urgence dans un jour normal. Donc, euh, si on a cette... Euh, euh, uh, cette nécessité de, uh, de faire le test, il faut uh, 
c'est beaucoup plus de travail pour euh, la salle d'urgence. So, ça, ce qu'il faut faire, c'est vraiment euh, continuer avec le travail pour avoir un euh, site euh, qui ne sépare l'hôpital, euh, où on peut faire cette, euh, euh, les tests pour euh, le public. Oh, merci. Uh, Dr. Etch, as you mentioned travel a bit earlier, but given that we have a declaration of pandemic by the World Health Organization today, do you have advice for people who are traveling internationally to the States with uh, March break coming up or traveling in the, in the near future? Yes, uh, so the, the best uh, ad, uh, advice to find out what is happening with the particular destination uh, someone is going to is to check the federal government website for specific travel advisories. Uh, there are certain parts of the world uh, still much more affected than others. Um, uh, for example, people returning from uh, Hubei province in China, Iran, Italy has been added to the list uh, where we actually advise stronger measures when people return from those areas. Uh, we actually ask people to self-isolate for the 14 days. Um, and that changes, that list is changing, so we continue to monitor that. Um, for others, the risk is lower, and so it is a matter of self-monitoring when you return. The advice for travelers is to think about whether this is an important trip for you, uh, whether it could be postponed. It's also to think about the measures you can take uh, to protect yourself. So to think about um, can you uh, make sure that you are going to a destination where it's easy to keep distance from others, to avoid crowds, to uh, be able to even self-isolate if you become ill uh, when, you're, when you're overseas. These are things uh, that we, we recommend people think about, uh, in addition to the usual messages around hand washing. Pour, uh, pour en revenir à la personne qui est infectée, est-ce que... Elle est seule dans sa maison en quarantaine ou est-ce que la famille est là? Est-ce que la famille est testée? Et aussi, j'aimerais savoir combien de temps ça prend avant de recevoir un résultat quand on passe le test. Um, alors, je vais euh, décrire la situation en général pour protéger le, 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 le cas, mais je peux expliquer euh, notre approche. Euh, quand quelqu'un est euh, identifié d'être à risque pour COVID-19 et en fait un dépistage, euh, ou, euh, après ça, quand, quand le dépistage est positif, on, on demande que les, les contacts aussi restent en isolation. Alors, dans une situation avec une famille, on demande que la famille aussi est en isolation. Euh, et si les membres d'une famille aussi ont des symptômes, Absolument. On, on, on fait un dépistage pour chaque membre de la famille qui peut-être aussi est infecté. Euh, et c'est bonne nouvelle, je voudrais partager aussi la bonne nouvelle, oh, excusez, c'est pas bonne nouvelle, de rien est bonne nouvelle avec <rire> le COVID, euh, je m'excuse, 19, mais c'est bon que nous avons euh, au, aujourd'hui euh, la capacité de faire le dépistage euh, la, dans un laboratoire ici à Ottawa. Alors, c'est le laboratoire de santé publique, euh, santé publique Ontario qui est ici, leur, leur branche ici, leur site, euh, qui peut faire le dépistage. Alors, ça prend juste six heures, six heures pour avoir le résultat. Uh, uh, oui, avant, uh, auparavant, uh, cette semaine, uh, nous avons eu uh, le besoin de... Transporté, uh, oui, Just a question about where the, the, the confirmed uh, patient, where was this person tested? Which hospital? That was at the, uh, at the Ottawa Hospital General Campus. The General Campus, thank you. And one other thing, we've been hearing about these drive-through testing. Any idea, any thoughts about implementing that? Uh, so it's definitely on our radar. Um, we, as you can imagine, this is a very, uh, a very complex state of affairs and we're rapidly escalating um, uh, our response. Um, so our priority right now is to get the assessment center open to develop uh, regional patient distribution models to make sure we're protecting our emergency departments, to create outreach um, clinical units that can help offload uh, the strain of bringing patients in long-term care or patients with mobility issues into hospital, and that's something that we're using any option to leverage, including paramedics and, uh, yes, including the exploring the possibility of a drive-through option, but certainly nothing, uh, nothing that's been decided on yet. 
Thanks. Can I just um, maybe ask you to repeat uh, what you were talking about, the Public Health Ontario lab um, in English, because I did miss that. Yes, so before today, actually, uh, we had to take a swab uh, that was taken in a hospital in Ottawa and transport it to Toronto, to the Public Health Ontor Ontario Laboratory, where it would be processed. And they were doing a super job of turning those around within eight hours or so of when they received them, but there's a transport time and they were batching them. Uh, today, we are able to send uh, s the swabs that are taken to the Public Health Ontario Laboratory in Ottawa, and they have told us that the turnaround time is six hours. And can you tell me how many tests, if you know the exact number, we are awaiting, uh, you are re awaiting results for? Uh, I don't have the exact number, but you can imagine if we're taking about 20 a day, that's how many we'd be waiting for at any one time. It's a, about one day's worth at any time? Yes, okay. And did the numbers bump up or have you been seeing, doing about 20 a day? I can't remember when I last spoke to the media about numbers, but I do, I think it was a press conference with, with the mayor and the chair. I think at that time I was uh, probably just last week saying four or five per day. Uh, so we do see an increase and, and we expect that to continue to increase with the number of people traveling. And, and my, do I remember correctly that you said 200 calls yesterday? Yes. 200 calls, close 20 to tests. Two, close okay. to 200, yeah. Um, and is there any issue with protective equipment, either public health or hospitals? Um, are there shortages? What are the concerns about them? So our public health team uh, does most of our work over the phone, so they don't need any masks, uh, but I'll leave that to the healthcare partner. Sure. Um, so during times of uh, a, a pandemic, um, it we predict that there are an increased use uh, and need for personal protective equipment. Um, we have a, a very well coordinated regional distribution model. It's one of the reasons why we stand up as a healthcare sector for the region as a whole. Um, so we have close eyes on it. Um, because infectious disease is something that we deal with every day. So we deal with people with febrile respiratory illnesses respiratory illnesses every day. Um, it's something we're quite used to, um, and there are stockpiles that are available. Um, and we do have mechanisms to increase accessibility of um, this protective equipment as necessary, and we don't foresee any, uh, any shortages. And can I ask you about ventil ventilators as well? Absolutely. Uh, so we do have, uh, we do have stockpiles uh, within the hospital, uh, with, which in, we have stockpiles within our regional hospitals, um, and we also have uh, uh, provincial and federal stockpiles that we have access to. So we'll take one or two more questions, and then we'll go to closing comments from Dr. Etches. If I could just mention uh, Tony DeMonte, who is our general manager of uh, emergency services, in a briefing this morning indicated that they're always required to have at least one month ahead of, of supplies, which they have, and they're working on uh, a regional basis, uh, getting more mass and so on, but there's always a month's supply at the paramedic operation. Yeah, moi j'ai une petite question parce qu'hier j'ai écouté un médecin italien dire qu'il y a tellement de cas sérieux en ce moment qu'on est obligé de choisir qui va vivre ou qui va mourir parce qu'il n'y a pas suffisamment de respirateurs. Des choses du genre. Vous avez des chambres négatives qu'on dit, là, negative rooms? Oui, oui. Vous, là, qu'est-ce que vous avez comme... Euh, vous êtes le principal hôpital ici, là? Il va y avoir plus de cas. Alors, vous êtes capable de traiter jusqu'à combien de personnes? Oui, et vraiment, il faut, il faut voir la région. Donc, euh, à l'hôpital d'Ottawa, nous avons 90 euh, chambres de euh, pression négative euh, euh, partout l'hôpital. Euh, euh, dans euh, euh, le soin intensif, euh, nous avons aussi le même euh, espace de chambre. Uh, mais vraiment, du, uh, uh, quand on parle de si on a suffisant de ventilateurs, si, uh, uh, la réponse simple, c'est oui. Et nous avons des mécanismes pour, uh, uh, pour uh, avoir de plus si c'est nécessaire, uh, même, avec, uh, même dans uh, notre hôpital, uh, mais aussi avec les, les autres hôpitaux dans la région, et avec la province et le gouvernement fédéral. Donc, c'est uh, toute partie d'une un, planification qui... Uh, qui existent déjà, donc il faut juste utiliser les mécanismes avec, euh, avec euh, 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 les autres partners mm -hmm. <laughs> euh, pour, euh, pour accéder à cette chose. Uh, well. yeah. sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, you know, 
we certainly have uh, we certainly have stockpiles. We certainly have um, uh, uh, the ability to get more equipment as necessary, including ventilators. And when it comes to the hospital capacity to appropriately isolate patients, um, we you know at the Ottawa Hospital we have 90 negative pressure isolation rooms and we're able to um, essentially look at our hospital operations and uh, who is in these rooms and we can actually redistribute um, among campuses and also within our hospital to make sure that all the people that need that kind of isolation um, have it available to them. Just one last question about the confirmed case. Do we have any knowledge if this person took public transit? Uh, our investigation to date uh, suggests that this person has not taken public transit. I'll just hand the floor over to our panel just for closing remarks, if we have anything to add. I just want to perhaps conclude by saying that, um, you know, the public health approach continues with the same objective uh, as before uh, the confirmation of this first positive case. We are looking to detect uh, every case that is uh, a result of travel into Ottawa. Uh, so we are asking people who travel outside of the country to monitor for symptoms when they return, to call public health if they develop symptoms, and we are increasing our capacity for the testing that would then potentially be required to rule out uh, the coronavirus. And so I'm very thankful for the partnership with the city that's making facilities available. I'm very thankful to the Ottawa Hospital for their leadership around the health care capacity in our community and our region. And I'm very thankful to the media for helping to get the messages out. Uh, people <coughs> definitely are concerned about the situation and it's important to keep reminding people that there are things they can do to protect themselves. It actually really does work to keep your distance from ill people and to wash your hands and to avoid touching your face if your hands aren't clean. So thank you very much. Thank you very much to our panel and our media partners as well. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>